Hey there, I'm Shane, and today I'm going to be talking about a very interesting lens, and that is the Lawa 24mm probe lens. This lens falls somewhere between a novelty item and an extremely functional macro lens, and in this video I'm going to be talking all about it. In this video, I'm not going to be doing as thorough of a review as I normally would because I've only had this lens for the past month and I'm borrowing it from a friend. So I haven't had the long term review I normally like to do, but I'm going to be discussing the build quality and the image quality. I have not shot much video with it because I want to kind of focus on one component and I decide on photography for it because I don't see a ton of videos online discussing its application for photography. I'll start off with discussing the elephant in the room, or moreover, it's more of a giraffe, and that is the build of this lens. If you're in the medical field, it reminds me very much so of an endoscopy probe, and it's just rigid rather than bendy. It has an all metal design, and the lens that I'm using today is uh, a Canon EF mount, which I have adapted to Sony FE and it doesn't really make a difference which, which lens mount you get for this lens because it's a dumb lens so it doesn't actually transmit any of the lens data to the body you're using which is meaning it doesn't really matter which camera you use this with it's going to perform the exact same theoretically so in terms of the build it is interesting they, they made a lot of choices to keep the form factor the way it is so the aperture ring and the focusing ring on it are very small and unless you're using gears they're quite difficult to operate purely because of their size and where they're situated on the lens so if you're going to be adjusting the focus it's very easy to accidentally adjust the aperture and in order to go all the way from a ratio of two to one macro to infinity it only takes a half turn which can be rather difficult when you're trying to pull focus on macro subjects. So you're almost relegated to needing to use a slider, which is more likely than not what you'll be doing, or a focusing ring with gears and being able to adjust the actual turning ratio that way. Overall though, it's built well. They didn't cut any corners in terms of quality because this whole first half is waterproof and it's just, it feels very rigid. There's one interesting thing that you don't often see on a lens, and that is on the underside here, there's a USB-C socket. This allows you to plug in an external power source and actually have utilization of the LED ring light, which is at the end of the lens. You have a separate cable that allows you to turn it up and down in terms of power, but this can obviously be very handy when you're trying to get more technical photos of subjects. So it's very easy to expose them because the light source is physically attached to the end of your lens. If you're trying to get some good looking shots though, this can be a little bit difficult because when you're shooting at a ratio of say, like one to four, where your subject is clearly in the frame and you can see normal size stuff, it's going to look very much so akin to a cell phone flashlight video just because it's going to have a very harsh single point of light however as you start getting closer with one to one and two to one your subject is so much smaller relative relative to your light source that it can start looking like a diffuse light source purely purely because of the scale of the light to your subject so it is functional in certain situations, but it's not like a perfect solution. I'm happy it's there, and I think it was a great addition for them to include this with this lens, but just don't rely on it too heavily uh, and expect it to be perfect. Moving on though, I'll discuss the image quality now. And this is a topic that's rather hit or miss, I found in my use with it. At F14, this lens is completely adequately sharp is nothing that's going to compare with those like super high resolution macro lenses but i wouldn't expect it to be however as you stop the lens down to get a greater depth of field 
you notice diffraction start creeping in rather quickly. I'm not sure the reason for this, but I would presume it's because this lens is a foot long and is probably just difficult to design without having significant diffraction. In order to get the best image quality from this lens, as is the case with any macro lens, is going to depend on the settings that you use in order to maximize the amount of light you're actually getting to your sensor. And this can be achieved through many ways, but all of them are complicated by the design of this lens. The first and the most simple, which I already discussed, and that is introducing more light. This can be achieved by simply using the LED at the end of this, this lens, but that is obviously not going to be the best solution in all scenarios and in order to get like prettier shots using external light sources is obviously desirable where this can be complicated is the fact that this is such a long lens so in order to get your light source out here it's, it's just more complicated and on top of that is the fact that this is a wide angle lens so relative to your subject you're going to want the light source to be relatively close to it but at the same time not show up in your shot and not be too aggressive. So it can just get very complicated using external flash and a diffusion source on this probe. And on top of that, you have issues with your shutter speed because with a 24 millimeter lens, typically you expect that passive motion blur isn't gonna be an issue. However, because of the length of the lens, all your movements, are gonna be amplified. So you're gonna to have to shoot at relatively higher shutter speeds unless you're using a tripod. And even then, any movement of like clicking the shutter is gonna slightly shake the camera much more than it would typically. So because of those two things and the fact that the minimum aperture is 14, you end up running into issues with the settings you're going to be operating at. I was taking most of the photos that you'll see on a Sony A1, which is all things considered the best kind of foot forward I could put for this lens, which is a high resolution sensor that can handle relatively high ISOs. And even then, my hit rate for photos was abysmally low. I was having a very hard time kind of finding the right balance between the correct aperture to shoot at without having to crank up my ISO too high while trying to get additional lighting involved and it becomes a whole fiasco which kind of defeats the purpose of this lens because it's meant to be non-invasive and that is kind of the best part about it is the fact that you can get really close to bugs in typical subjects that would be very skittish around a lens that you have to get close to them with Whereas this lens, just because of its form factor, you can get close to them without actually having to get close to them. So that is a huge advantage for this lens. And I got some really interesting shots with it that I typically wouldn't have been able to get with other macro lenses I've used in the past. So with all the, the difficulty in terms of operations that this lens brings forward, the advantages that it brings are also extremely significant as well. So yeah, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. It is sweet, but also difficult. <laughs> so despite the complications introduced by the actual design of the lens, this has been one of the most fun lenses I've had the pleasure of using. It is extremely interesting and it is unlike anything I've used before. And a lot of the complaints I brought forward, I don't think necessarily are valid in the light of the fact that this lens is not terribly expensive, all things considered. And it certainly is disproportionately hard to come by. But the thing is, if this was a $10,000, $12,000 lens, which say had a better design, had a better focusing system, and overall just had all the features that you theoretically would want, it probably wouldn't be accessible at all because it costs too much to make and no one would produce it. So I think Lawa did a great job in making this interesting product and it's just really exciting to have it on the market. And I've seen some incredible video shots from other people out there. And it's all thanks to the fact that 
this lens exists. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and uh, had fun watching it as much fun I had actually making it. So I hope you have a great day. Thanks again and see you in the next one.